When I was about 14 years old, I went up to the office of my high school principal and knocked on his door. He looked up at me and said, yes, come in, who sent you up here, what have you done wrong? I said, sir, I haven't done anything wrong, I just want to talk to you. He said, oh, come in then, sit down. He was a bit amused that someone about 14 years old would be bold enough to approach the principal like this. And I said, sir, first of all, I've become a Christian and my life has changed. And first of all, I just want to apologize for any trouble I ever caused any teachers before I became a Christian. And secondly, I said, I want to ask your permission to use a room at lunchtime so I can start a Christian meeting, so I can tell other kids about Jesus, so they can have a chance to have their life changed as well. Well, he thought about it for a while and then he said, no, I don't think I can allow it. He said, everyone's got their own religion and if I allow you to promote your religion at school, one of the parents is bound to get upset and I'd just rather have no religion at all in the school, that way I won't have any trouble. So I thanked him for his time, shook his hand, and then I left and I went back to all my friends who'd been becoming Christians and I reported to them that the principal said no. But we all agreed that that night when we each went home, we would pray and ask the Lord to change our principal's mind while he was asleep. So that night before I went to sleep, I said, Lord, please change my principal's mind tonight while he's asleep. And then I turned the light out and went to sleep myself. And then sometime during the middle of the night, I woke up because my bedroom was full of light. I looked up at the light bulb, but it wasn't on, so I was wondering where the light was coming from. And then, as I looked down, I saw Jesus sitting on the end of my bed. His clothing and his skin was shining, it lit up the whole room. Automatically, I was drawn out of bed, and I didn't even feel cold when I came out from underneath the bed sheets. And I was drawn to a position of sitting on his lap and Jesus held me in his hands. Now I looked at his face and I thought, ah, it's Jesus. I saw the holes in his hands where the nails went through. It was still red, still an open wound. And when I saw that, I felt love because I knew he died for my sins. And I looked down at his feet. He was wearing sandals. They were a little bit dusty. And I saw the holes in his feet where the nails went through. Jesus had on a long white garment and it wasn't entirely clean, it looked a little bit dusty like Jesus had been out all day walking the streets seeking to save that which is lost and I looked at Jesus' face and I thought to myself gee, you're not very good looking, are you Jesus? when I thought that, Jesus smiled he knew exactly what I was thinking but he wasn't hurt nor offended he thought it was funny too. But when I looked at Jesus' eyes, I thought, ah, oh, this is the most beautiful face I've ever seen in my life. Jesus' eyes looked like oceans of liquid love. It's like looking into crystal clear water that you think it's shallow, but actually it's deep, but it's because it's so clear. I felt like I could see for miles into Jesus' eyes and all I could see as deep and wide as I looked was love, wholeness, gentleness, tenderness, purity. I feel like I could write a book about that thick, about the things that I saw about Jesus, just by looking in his eyes, without him even saying anything about it. One thing I could see about Jesus is that he never takes his eye off his Heavenly Father. He's always conscious of his Heavenly Father. He's always keen to know the Father's will, and he delights to do the Father's will. Jesus isn't thinking, Oh, Father, do I have to do your will again? No, he delights to know and to do the Father's will. It's like Jesus is thinking, 
Well, last time I did your will, Father, instead of my own, look how good the results have been. So now I can't wait to do your will again. Just let me know what it is. I feel that Jesus seemed more delighted that he was allowed to be with me than I was to be seeing him in this vision. But as delighted as Jesus was that the Heavenly Father allowed him to be with me, I could see in his eyes that he was careful not to stay one moment longer than what his Heavenly Father willed. Another thing I could see in Jesus' eyes is that his love is so strong that he keeps reaching out in love even when people reject his love. Unlike our human love, when our human love gets rejected, we can tend to withdraw or to protect ourselves a little bit, but not Jesus. He loves so much that even when a person rejects his love, he keeps on loving even more. He keeps extending his love to that person. Well, Jesus said to me, So, you're thinking of starting a meeting at Bremer, hey? Bremer High School is the name of the school I went to. So I said to Jesus, yes, and we talked about my plans to start this meeting. Well, the next day at school, my friend, who had accompanied me the day before when I approached the principal, he said, John, I just saw the principal a moment ago, and when the principal saw me, he came running down the steps, he said, and he said to me, oh, I'm so glad I found you. I've been looking for you boys all over. About that meeting you want to have, I've changed my mind overnight, the principal said. Now I want you to have that meeting. Which room do you want to use? Well, when I heard that, I chose the best room in the school. It had carpeted floors, ceiling fans, audio-visual equipment, and once a week, for the rest of my high school years, we preached Jesus. People were saved. People were filled with the Holy Spirit. A couple of people who got saved in those days ended up becoming missionaries, serving the Lord overseas. Jesus.